How do you land a top-level job in corporate Asia? In an ever more competitive job market, that was the question posed to an international panel of top headhunters recently at NUS. Brought together by NUS Business School's Center for Strategic Leadership, they laid out the challenges that job seekers and companies face as they each try to find the right corporate connection. Often, it's the headhunter who makes that connection, though Tan Su Jin with Amrop Heaver Group says headhunter might be a misnomer. And we are matchmakers, uh, glorified matchmakers <laughs> to some extent, uh, paid fairly highly for that, but mainly because we have a skill now. Tan defines that skill as finding the right person for the right job. And the candidates he ferrets out, more often than not, aren't even in the job market. So we find people who are not looking for a change. So in some ways, and this is not sound, meaning to sound arrogant, in some ways, we call you, try not to call us. If they do call, the audience was told, be nice. You don't know where that call might lead. Johannes Wardana from Egon Zender says when he makes the call, it's his job to convince a candidate to make the move, or at least consider the offer. I see myself primarily as a career option maker. When I talk to CEO candidates, when I talk to director candidates, what I like to see myself is I like to provide an op a career option to them. Why? Because you don't need to exercise the option if you don't like it now or later. You can do it later. Okay? But it's good for everyone to have a career option. And a career plan. Kerry Consulting Managing Director Declan O'Sullivan says career planning is something too many people neglect. Many people in this room, if you're anything like the people that I meet, genuinely have spent more time planning your last holiday than you did planning your career. And you should think about it. That's a very dangerous, dangerous place to be. Mobility is becoming a bigger part of the plan. Technology makes working from a remote location easier, as Advantage Leadership Advisory Partner Michael Ascott demonstrated by joining the conference by Skype from Bangkok. But he said more corporations are looking for mobile executives, and those willing to pack up and go have an advantage. The truth is in Asia, there is a family, there's a tradition, there is a heritage. So people are not just moving but that will change in my humble view. It has to, according to Tan Su Jin, who also holds the post of executive in residence at NUS Business School. The type of managers his company looks for have that international and multifunction experience, something he calls two by two by two. I worked in two continents or two countries, uh, two functions, and maybe two industries. That historically hasn't been the case. You tend to do one country, one function, one industry. I think because of this need for ability to be flexible, this two by two by two uh, would be of tremendous help in the development of the, of the individual. Tan has been headhunting since 1977. The other panelists also have decades in the industry. They've witnessed the emergence of LinkedIn and other online job search tools, but they don't think those can replace the role of a top-level executive search service. There is room for technology in commoditized recruitment, um, which is to say in, in areas where you can define a specific skill set. At its simplest, if you're looking for a bricklayer, no problem. I mean, we just look at all the bricklayers that are in the given geographical region, and I will find a bricklayer who can put 60 bricks per minute up, and we are done. In the business that, that we're in, that's, well, that's, that's just a different business. And the business itself has changed. Egon Zender's Wardana says when he started out 18 years ago, people were, well, confused about what he was trying to do. Uh, in fact, there were a few funny uh, stories that I can tell, w one, of it, one of which was I called someone, you know, I wanted to meet with the person, and then he came with his boss. <laughs> okay, that, that's how, how bad they, they didn't know about what we did. But now, he says, people are more sophisticated, especially the younger, more research-savvy generation. They know who these consultants are, and they're ready to at least pick up the phone and chat should a headhunter call come in. For NUS Business School, I'm Katie Sargent.